a tablespoon of honey, or maybe it's a teaspoon of honey. Um, uh, so I'm gonna toast these. You know. What is up, everyone? Mark here again for another episode of Pandemic Pantry. Today we're gonna tackle another request. Um, I've had a few people ask for meatloaf, uh, so today I'm gonna show you how I do meatloaf. Let's get started. All right, so meatloaf. Um, the recipe that I use is based on uh, Alton Brown's recipe from a show called Good Eats. Uh, you can Google it if you want the original recipe. Um, this is slightly modified and um, I do a little bit different preparation on it as well. But um, here's what we need. We're gonna start with uh, six ounces by weight of breadcrumbs. I'm using seasoned breadcrumbs here. You don't have to. Um, if you're not measuring it by weight, it would be just a little over a cup, maybe a cup plus one ounce. Then we need half a teaspoon of cayenne. half a teaspoon of black pepper. One teaspoon of chili powder. one and a half of kosher salt. And one teaspoon of dried thyme. set that aside for a minute. Uh, we also need one onion and about one carrot, uh, one small onion and a uh, carrot. Um, I'm using some frozen uh, carrot that I had saved, uh, shredded. Um, just thawed it out. I'm gonna run the knife through it a few times just to kind of really get it chopped up fine because you know we want really small pieces. This is really a super easy meatloaf. Right, so we're gonna add this breadcrumb mixture. You do kind of want to make sure you don't have any huge chunks of onions in there, so. And this too goes into the bowl. 
with the carrots and the breadcrumbs or the breadcrumb mixture. All right, uh, I'm gonna get some of this stuff cleared out of the way and I'll be right back. Okay, now before I forget, I do want to add our garlic. It is three cloves of garlic. Okay, next we need our ground beef. Um, you want to use about uh, two and a quarter pounds, but uh, I've got more like two and a half pounds here and that's okay. Uh, so I'm gonna just gently break this up and add it in one package at a time. start mixing this before we add the egg we want to start getting this as combined as we can and we want to kind of keep breaking up the meat to really get all the stuff kind of evenly mixed or as evenly as you can get it I mean it's uh... <laughs> A good way to tell uh, how thoroughly you've mixed it is um, do you still have dry breadcrumbs at the bottom of the pan or the bottom of the bowl? If you do, then you need to keep mixing it because it's all got to get incorporated. And you do, like I said, you want to kind of keep breaking up the chunks. That's pretty well combined, so I think we can add our egg. And this will help, you know, sop up any of the remaining breadcrumbs that are not quite mixed in yet. Now, there are a couple of different ways that you can prepare this, uh, and I've explained both in the recipe down in the description. But, um, you know, the, the normal, quote unquote, normal way would be to just pack this into a loaf pan, um, turn it out onto uh, a baking sheet, and, and to cook it um, as one big meatloaf. I don't want to do that, and I usually don't do that. What I like to do is press these into muffin tins and wrap them and freeze them individually. And then I have meatloaf portions for however long that lasts. And it's, it's usually a good long time. Uh, sometimes I make this in double batches and um, it just, it's, it's nice to have something always ready to go in the freezer, you know. Um, and this is a particularly tasty meatloaf. All right, I think we're almost ready to do this. Just give me another minute to clean a couple things up and I'll be right back. Okay, we're ready. Um, so all, really all we're gonna do is uh, mold meatloaf muffins. Um, now you can use individual sheets of uh, plastic wrap and do one in each cup of the muffin tin. Uh, that way, if you freeze it in the tin, you can just wrap the plastic over them when you're done, make sure that they're wrapped up tightly. Uh, before you uh, put them back in the freezer to store. Um, I like to vacuum seal mine, <clears throat> so I'm going to turn them out of the plastic. I'm just going to use one sheet of plastic to mold it, turn it out, put them on a, a, a sheet where I can freeze them. Uh, once I have mine frozen, I freeze them in packs of two, uh, generally, uh, because that's about you know what I, my partner and I usually have for portion size. Um, you can always 
add more to that. Uh, that's the great thing. It's kind of modular, depending on how many people you've got for dinner and how hungry people are. You can make uh, as few or as many as you want. Uh, so let's get started. All right, so now, like I said, you can do this a number of different ways. If you want to do them directly in the uh, in the muffin tin, you can do that just with individual sheets of plastic wrap. But uh, I find that that tends to get stuck together and kind of make a mess while you're doing it. Um, even if I were individually wrapping these in plastic wrap once they were frozen, I think I would still do it this way. Uh, of course, provided you have the space to put a, a you know a, a sheet full of these things in your freezer. Uh, but this is you know uh, a number of meals ready to go. So I'm gonna throw these in the freezer and um, I'll meet you back at the stove and I'll show you how we would prepare these. All right, welcome back. So rather than show you how to cook the regular raw meatloaf, um, I figured I would show you how I prepare them from frozen because uh, it does differ a little bit uh, from how you uh, cook the raw meatloaf, especially if you were cooking it uh, in a full loaf. Um, again, I have the modified and the original uh, instructions for this uh, in the description down below. So as I said, I like to freeze these in packs of two because that's what we generally consider uh, serving for one. And they stick together a little bit in the package there. So these will go into a 350 degree oven for about 10 minutes and then we will take them out and do the glaze. Okay, so for the glaze, again, if you were making the full meatloaf, you would need a half a cup of ketchup, a tablespoon of honey, a teaspoon of cumin, and a dash uh, each of Worcestershire sauce and hot sauce. Uh, I'm going to be making uh, less than that because I've only got four uh, pucks in the oven. Well, I guess you can't really do less than a dash. Okay, now once they've been in for about 10 minutes, we'll pull them out and uh, get them glazed up. All right, it is time to glaze. Well, basically just Spoon a little on each one. Oops. Oopsies. And then with the pastry brush, just get it all kind of down the sides. You want there to be good coverage because otherwise you're going to kind of dry out the outside of the meatloaf. 
Uh, same goes if you're cooking the, the whole um, loaf pan version of this. And then because I like extra glaze, and I always make a little bit too much, I like to put a little, a little hat of glaze <laughs> on top of each one. All right, these are gonna go back in, and this time I'm going to turn in the pan. And now I want to cook these until they reach about 155, 160 inside. Um, I expect that'll probably take about another 15, 20 minutes. Um, in the meantime, I'm also going to use up some hamburger buns we have that are past date, but they're still okay. I'll just make a few garlic toasts to go with this and uh, we'll heat up some frozen peas and we have a meal. And you know, kind of the whole point here is that if you do these little pucks, you have dinner at your disposal. Um, I don't know if I said this earlier, but I make a double batch of this all the time. Um, and we just have, you know, tons of them frozen and it's just super easy uh, to throw together dinner at the last minute, you know, 20, 30 minutes worth of work in the stove and uh, you know, you've, you've, you've got dinner. Um, and you know, frozen peas next to it isn't hard either. And leftover bread products into garlic bread isn't hard. So we'll give this about 15, 20 more minutes. I'll check the temperature and we'll be back when we're ready to serve. Okay, I think we're ready to pull these out. I just pulled my uh, garlic toast hamburger buns out of the toaster and started the peas in the microwave. And I think the timing is gonna work out perfectly this time. I hope. Sure, these are. Oh yeah, one seventy, one sixty one, one sixty five. Yeah, these are good. So we want these to sit for a minute to rest. They have had a long journey in the oven. Making a mess.
no, run away peas. I can't say I'm surprised because this is the meatloaf I always make, but it's just really good. Um, that's it, folks. I just suggest you try this recipe. Hey, if you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe. Whole nine yards. I'll see you in the next one.